Hi, it's Naomi, back with another vlog for you. This time I'm going to be talking about Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver. Um, she is probably most well known for her Chronicles of Ancient Darkness series, Wolf Brother, etc. Um, and also her ghost stories, Thin Air and Dark Matter. Um, I haven't personally read any of them, but they always come highly recommended by other booksellers. So I thought I'd go in fairly safe hands uh, with this novel. And I was, I really enjoyed it. It's a haunting kind of gothic novel. It's set in Edwardian Suffolk. Um, it follows uh, Maud, um, who is this highly repressed young woman. She's repressed not just by her father, but also by the expectations that society has for her as a young woman. Um, within the first few pages, you actually even find out that Maud's father uh, one day took an ice pick and went out and killed someone, the first person he came across. Um, so you know that from the get-go and um, basically the event, why it happened and what led up to it is what's explained in the rest of the book. The book starts off with a journalist in the 1960s tracking Maud down and trying to get um, her to sell her story. Um, at that point, Wakenhurst, the family home, is in uh, a state of decay. It's incredibly lonely there. It's on skeleton staff. Um, and that is kind of in contrast to how Wakenhurst was when Maud was growing up, because then we go back to Maud's childhood and she starts to tell us how she grew up. And although Wakenhurst is in better condition and it's a lot of a busier place, um, Maud still feels like quite highly isolated. Uh, as as the only girl in the family and she's left her own devices quite a lot and that actually really reminded me of The Secret Garden when Mary Lennox moves to the house and she feels totally alone and another kind of thing that that the parallel I drew between them was they both have these really good relationships with the outside world so Mary she's in, intrinsically tied to the secret garden and Maud she's tied to the fen that is just next to Wakenhurst um, and the Fen, uh, Michelle Pave does a really excellent job of um, creating the Fen almost as a character of its own in this novel. Um, she gives these brilliant, rich descriptions of, of the sights and the smells and the creatures and the people and what it even feels like to be in the Fen alone at night. Um, it's just a really excellent um, a thread that runs through the novel. So the book's mostly told by Maud and, and through her father's personal diaries. Um, when you start reading her father's diaries, you think he's a very stern, sort of traditional, staunch Christian character. But as you read on, you start to see some sort of dissent and also his opinions become more extreme. He, um, he holds these opinions that a modern audience find disgusting. But also, even at the time that the novel is set, they're quite controversial opinions. He's not a very likable character at all. Um, and I find me, I, I struggle to feel any sympathy for him. Um, but that is contrasted quite well with Maud because she's someone that you really do feel some sympathy for. And you particularly um, feel bad for her because she's stuck in the house with this absolutely vile man. Um, another thing I mentioned before was religion and her father being quite religious. Uh, religion's a huge theme throughout the book running through. Um, specifically things like iconography as well. There's a, a painting called The Doom uh, and there's a scene in the novel where her father uh, sees this painting. It's particularly really good, really impactful scene, I thought. Um, and also I think it's a little bit the painting and the father's relationship with the painting is a little bit of a call out to M.R. James. Um, there's an element of mysticism in the novel as well, um, partially because uh, Maud's father, he regards his life wo life's work as translating and creating an exegesis for um, this medieval uh, female mystics of diary um, that's been written on her behalf. Um, and you can definitely see as he gets more and more into that material, perhaps how it starts to take him over in one way or another. Uh, which kind of leads me on to talking about the supernatural, which is something that you can argue is present in this book, or you can argue that it isn't. It's very much, um, it's very much something that the reader is left to decide on their own. It's part of your own personal journey, how much of this you want to chalk up to su the supernatural and how much you want to chalk up to, you know, um, essentially mental illness. Um, 
it's really interesting way to write a book and I, th I think she's done very well by leaving it so ambiguous. It's impossible uh, to talk about this novel and not mention M.R. James and Susan Hill um, because they both wrote sort of gothic fiction in uh, the same sort of geographical area. Um, I think she definitely nods in their direction, however she brings a lot of her own to the party, even just format wise, like they're known for um, short stories and novellas where she's gone with a full length novel. So I feel like she's she's put her own stamp on things. Um, if you like books like The Essex Serpent, The Little Stranger, um, The Turn of the Screw, uh, The Woman in Black, then I think this will be one for you. Um, she's done an amazing job of writing it. The writing is fantastic. It's incredibly compelling. I, I, I breezed through it. It's one of those books that it's just a joy to read. And I think um, it's a great one for this time of year as well, because between the tradition of uh, Halloween and the Christmas ghost story, I think winter is always a great time for some gothic fiction. So um, I'll definitely be recommending it to a lot of people this winter. So um, I hope you try it as well and let me know what you think. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me today. If you want to hear more from me, more from the other vloggers or more from Waterstones in general, then do subscribe to our channel. Thank you.